Today is Saturday, May 25th, and today we will cover the trades for the end of the week for Tesla, Misty, Coney, and Viddy. So GameStop, back in the news, the shares are going up after hours, a completion of 933 million stock sale after meme frenzy. So obviously... Um, you know, the stock, the market reacted positively over this. So this is going to be pretty good for the Monday open. Um, I think last time I checked, it was up 12%. So this immediately makes me think of Ulti, right? So I went to Ulti, I checked out their holdings, and guess what? They don't own it. So unfortunately, at least for the GameStop part, um, you know, we won't be able to capture the capital gains involved with that for next week. But some of these are shorted stocks. So typically when one shorted stock uh, goes up a lot, some of the others do. I just realized they also own Reddit too. That's pretty cool. But uh, but yeah, I wish they had owned GameStop. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So let's let's uh, let's get started. Um. No trades yesterday, but I did have an option that actually got assigned early. This, this is the first time it's happened to me. Uh, and this one was unusual. Um, well, actually, I shouldn't say that. It, it has happened to me before, but the numbers were like completely like blown away that I got assigned because my strikes were blown through. In this example, I had a 750 call on TSLL that expired on Friday obviously yesterday, and TSLL at the current time was around like 755, 760 range, if that, um, barely 750. So it's unusual that I got assigned early. I mean, it ended up closing above 750, like I forget what it was, 755 range, something 777, something along those lines, but it's weird that I got assigned early when the stock was so close in price because it's not like, you know, they made a huge, massive profit. Because keep in mind, there's a buyer on the other side. Someone bought a call for seven fifty, and to, to take it early for five cents or whatever it was per share, I just thought that was weird. I figured I'd share that with you guys. All right, so every single... Every single fund had trades yesterday, but every single fund typically has trades on the Friday. So first we'll go through TSLY. What did they do? Well, they closed out their weekly calls and they opened new weekly calls. Pretty simple. They're keeping the same contract number separation and everything. Um, but it looks like they're moving away from the two strike approach, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, they are. They are. But well, they're pretty close. They are still sticking with the two price, two strike price approach, which is good. But it's not, you know, the gap is what, two two dollars and fifty cents. But anyway, let's get to the sheet. I'm already. Uh, I already can't talk. It's a great start. All right. So synthetics, what do we got? We got the 180 and we got the 175, both of which expire July 19th. So we don't have to talk about those. How did Tesla perform yesterday? Yesterday was May 24th. Tesla went up 3.17%. Tesla went up 3.1%. So I'd say that, that's a pretty good day. Because when they capture most of the upside, obviously that looks good for their calls. So let's go check it out. So they closed out the calls for last week. They paid 37 cents per share and three cents per share. So obviously when you see such low numbers, anything typically under a dollar, you're, you're gonna know, all right, that's a win. So if we look, scroll all the way to the right and we go to profit loss, they made 1.4 million and they made 3.9 million. So this is a very successful trade. Also, how much did they annualize? How much did they yield when all said and done? The annualized yield came to 63.9% and 36%. And this is good. This is good stuff. So they uh, they had a pretty good week. Tesla did very well, okay? Good job, Tesla fund manager. All right, so what did they do for next week? They opened two 
new positions. 6,690 contracts sits at the higher strike at 187.50. That's 4.61% out of the money. And then the largest, the larger of the two, 32,000 contracts, 185 strike. That's 3.21% out of the money. Kind of tight, uh, to be honest. The strikes are always tight, though. Um, I'd always wish 5% or above, you know. We always talked about the 5 to 15%, because you never know with Tesla. They could have a really, really good week, and we're going to lose out. But if it's just a steady, slow week, then these calls, these percentages will make sense. We just don't know. That's the problem. How much did these yield? You can see why they're a little tighter in the strikes. It yielded 36% and 46%. It looks like the implied volatility overall is just going down. So it's tough to make you know, the options premium that you want, uh, which is going to force them to sell closer to the money, which is going to be a problem if the underlying blows up right to the moon. Outstanding shares. The hell? I didn't carry that down. Yeah, 44,500. I didn't carry it down to the, the next uh, row. Where is it? There you go. Okay. Outstanding shares did change. It went down by 125,000. So the summary is the 30-day IV is 42%. It would, to me, I mean, that's still not bad. <clears throat> Outstanding shares, 44500000 Net income from the weekly calls, $14.2 million, which is $0.32 cents per share, a daily income of a whopping penny per day. Daily yield, 0.09%, and annualized that, it's 34%. Uh, reaction, Tesla fund manager, super, super happy, successful week won their trades. In fact, you know, where did Tesla close? Let's see. Tesla closed at 179. So they're 175 synthetic. They're 2.42% above it. And they're only 0.42% away from the other. So they're feeling pretty damn good heading into the weekend. Not only just the weekend, a three-day weekend. The market is closed on Monday. So Tesla fund manager, you know, they bought some gray goose, and they're just going to hang out by themselves in the house, you know, and throw a party. Hopefully, uh, you know, someone shows up to join them. But the, uh, the Tesla fund manager, they're, they're partying. They're going to be hungover for Monday for sure. I mean, Tuesday. All right, what do we got here? Short call income. $14.2 million. We covered that. It's $0.32. Cents. There's, no, there's no synthetic income to add to it. So what's our estimate for the month? Our estimate for Tesla is 48 cents, which is a 38% yield. But as we all know, Tesla is going to yield 50%. That's just what they do. They pay 50%. Outstanding holdings. What do we got? Well, who cares, right? Because we have a long time till any of this is due and expires. So obviously uh, we have two synthetics and then we have the two calls for next week. But let's look at the net asset value, 682.2 million. The NAV is 1533 and the trade price is 1532. You know, as I'm recording this video, I'm now thinking, all right, did I hit mic on? Good Lord, I hope I did. All right. So that's TSLY. Let's go to the next one. Oh, God, here we go. You know, can't avoid it. But here's NVIDI. So what did they do? Um, well, the damage was done yesterday, right? The damage was done. So they they uh, had, they had more shares, which we kind of knew. Uh, so they did a buy call, a sell put. And then they sold uh, two calls into next week. So they added to the synthetic. And they actually, well, they didn't scatter, actually. They didn't scatter the strikes. They scattered the timing of the strikes. But let's just take a look what, what they did. Birds are out, but they're a little further away today, so you probably can't hear them as good. Uh, synthetic 1040, we said they added to it, so let's scroll up. They added 190 contracts, and it cost them about 300K. 
because it's priced above the strike. So again, the synthetic strike now, believe it or not, is 1,040 for the NVIDIA. NVIDIA strike and NVIDIA is priced at 1064. So they're already 2.37% above. So again, this stock is unbelievable. Never seen anything like it. And it's, the thing is like, this is one of the stocks I didn't buy in the beginning and I just always looked at and here we are. It was so cheap when I started investing too. All right, so yesterday NVIDIA went up 2.57%. NVIDIA went up 2% percent okay that's good but not that great so anyway i just wanted to make a comment uh we were wondering <clears throat> you know should they have closed out the positions yesterday and taken the loss and looking at the result from yesterday the answer is yes so them closing out the calls early was the right move you know so i just wanted to let you know point that out so they did make the right move on that aspect it was damaging for sure, closing out those calls. You know, if, if you need to recap, here's the prices. So you can imagine how much we lost. We lost our shirts. Um, all right, so new positions. So again, they, we can show everything from yesterday and then what they did yes, um, the day before. So what they do yesterday, they have, you know, 190 contracts and for whatever reason, I mean, they chose the same strike, 1,080. And I don't know what time they did this. I didn't go back and check. But, I mean, it only went up 2%. So look at this. They went 1.44% out of the money on 190 contracts with four trading days. I mean, I get it's a short week. But really? The way NVIDIA is trending? You're going to go 1.44% out of the money? After you got your ass whooped? Like... The current, the, the same week, you're, you I mean, you got balls of steel or you're just, I don't know. You're just not the wisest. I, I, I don't understand this move. Again, I'm thinking because you're going to see some of these others are tight calls too. I'm thinking there's something in the news next week that could push the stock market down. At least that's what I'm thinking that they're thinking, but I have no idea. But is there ever a reason? to go 1.44% out of the money. All right, let's see what they annualized on that. The annualized yield, 37% and 51%. So that, that would typically be the only argument that the implied volatility was not there. So the premium was not there. So they had to go tight. But again, my argument always in this scenario is I'd rather yield something than lose money, right? I don't care if it's an annualized yield of 10% for one week, right? Just one week because it's the low IV, but at least we'll win, right? We'll win the, we'll win our calls. But again, I, I don't know. And then the reason I have the other two up from the top, those, you know, they got their asses whooped and they only went 4% out of the money. And yesterday, look what happened. Look what happened yesterday. They went up 2.5%. And here we are. These are also now 1% out of the money. So all of our contracts are 1% out of the money, 1.44 and 1.91. Heading into next week, four trading days, we're 1% out of the money on NVIDIA. I mean, good luck with this. I own NVIDIA, so this kind of hurts, to be honest. Yeah, anyway. Um, outstanding shares did go up 325,000. So the interest is still there. 30 day IV. Yes, we know it's lower 37.66%. Again, that's why they're going tight on the strikes, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. Outstanding shares. I don't know if I said this 18.7 million, but income from the weekly calls you know, it's a loss, all right? So they're not making money on the weekly calls. In fact, they lost 21.8 million. So I won't go any further. Um, this is my reaction because I don't think it's wise to continue to keep tight calls. I don't even care what the volatility is. You know, I don't even see where the, in the prospectus it says they have to yield something, right? But uh, maybe I need to go back and review them because I know they did revise them, but... This is just a little aggravating, the way they're treating NVIDIA. All right, so how are we looking? Well, 
they uh you know they rolled the synthetic the day before so they got you know overall 59.5 million that's going to save them for this month short call loss 21 million so net income overall is 37.7 million total income per share is two dollars and one cent okay so you know again overall they're still making money um, we can't do an estimate because again the weekly the daily income from the weekly calls is a loss so since the total income per share is 201 we're probably again this is rod estimate randomly a dollar you know a dollar and change that's all i can give you for now I'm not going to go through the holdings because again it's obviously way too early and i hope i'm nvidia i hope it stays flat next week or goes down Net asset value, $536 million. NAV, $28.59. Trade price, $28.55. Four cent discount. Woo! Okay. Who's next? Who wants to go next? Anybody? Oh, boy. Here we go. All right, Coney. We love Coney, but what the hell's going on here? Um, a lot of stuff. Too much stuff, to be honest. I opened this. I was like, oh, man. So... What did they do? What did they do? They obviously closed their synthetic position. All right. Um, they did. They sold a call for the 220 synthetic and they BC'd buy to close the put for the 220 synthetic. So that synthetic's gone. They opened the new one, buy call with the 230 synthetic, sell put 230 synthetic. All right. So that's the new synthetic. And then what else did they do? Three BCs. They closed out the positions from last week. Clearly, they didn't do it early in the day because it cost them a lot of money. And then they sold calls into the following week. So let's just take a look at the numbers. Okay, here we are. Synthetic 220. As mentioned, they closed this baby out. Why did they close it out? Well, because they lost their shirts on the weekly calls. So they needed to offset the damage so they got 30.2 million dollars on closing this synthetic why well they because they were priced above the strike price and the buy call was worth 74.2 million however since there was so much time left again this expires july 19th the put actually cost a lot so it cost 44 million to close which is why they only got the 30.2 million but overall this synthetic 220 it was all for May and it got it made 40 million overall. So that's pretty good. Now they have a new synthetic position, a synthetic 230, which they started. Again, 23,160 contracts. Cost them about 7.3 million to open this position, which will go, you know, net against the 30 million in profits from the other synthetic. Same expiration date, July 19th, just a higher strike of 230, which they're already 3% above. So that's okay. That's good. Um However, weekly calls, not so much, right? Weekly calls, kind of kind of damaging. But because the coin, you know, we were calling the coin gods yesterday. We were. We wanted them to stay with us. But the coin gods, they let us down. They just left. They said, screw you. I'm going to help Tesla. And Tesla won. Coin, Coney, whatever. Dah. No, this is not what we wanted yesterday. It went up 8.59%. Coney only went up 3.59%, but that's because their strikes were tight. They were tight at the time. And here's the problem. ET, um, Ethereum got approved for ETFs. It got approved, I believe, overnight. So it's not like, you know, they had time to close it the day before, but... You figure <clears throat> something like that is going to drive the price of Coinbase up, right? And it actually, from what I saw, Coin was gradually going up. So there was a small opportunity, a small window at the open where they probably could have closed these positions for a little cheaper. I didn't check the numbers. If anyone wants to, feel free. Um, again, I can't. I just, you know, just too much. But... I can guarantee, not guarantee, but I'm, I'm almost certain that they could have closed it in the morning for a much cheaper value. Now, 
they're typically not going to do that because they want the time value to run out. So, you know, and they don't know what's going to happen. What if they close it early and it ends up tanking and it's like, you know, a bad move. But at the same time, this was big news, like huge news, you know, just like the Bitcoin ET, ET, uh, ETF announcement. Ethereum is the number two, you know, Ethereum. Apparently they got approved. I didn't see an article. I should have probably should have pulled it up. But they got approved too, and that's I believe that's the reason that coin blew up. And yeah, that's what we paid. We paid eighteen ninety five. We paid eleven sixty one. We paid four sixty. So we lost every single contract. We lost money. So we lost uh, in the end. It was a loss of about you know almost twenty million dollars. So yeah, that sucks. Okay, that really really sucks. So if you look the call debit right. So how much did they lose yesterday alone? About 27 million. How much did they make on the synthetic? Well, we said what? 30 net of seven. So let's just say 23, right? So they made 23 million from the synthetic and they lost 27. So in that example, they weren't really saved, to be honest. They kind of just still lost money. You know, Coney's not usually the one losing, but this. This is not a great week. Um, all right, so let's look at their new positions. They have two strike prices, 13,160 contracts at a 252 strike. That's 6.25% out of the money. 10,000 contracts, 250 strike. That's 5.2% out of the money. A little tight, um, you know, still kind of tight in my opinion, but at least it's not 2%. I mean, this is crypto though. I mean, it would be nice to have one of them have like close to double digits. Annualized yield on these to get an idea. They got 55% annualized on one, 71% on the other. Okay, outstanding shares, uh, no change. That's surprising. All right, so 30 day IV, 72%. Okay, is that good? That's okay. Outstanding shares, 22.9 million. Total net income. Uh, I mean, there's actually income, but it's not much. It's 407,000. It got eaten away this week from the calls that the Coney gods did not, you know, keep us keep us safe. You know, I tried to make the short video yesterday. I was calling the, the Coney gods were calling. They only got the ugly one and the ugly one couldn't do it. So here we are. A distribution of two cents a share. Daily income doesn't even come to a penny. Daily yield zero. Annualized 1.254%. So for the weekly calls, we're essentially yielding nothing. Rolling my eyes because, again, I think they could close, um, you know, being a such, such an active fund, I thought they could close out those calls a little earlier in the day to avoid the, uh, the buy-up from the Ethereum play. All right, the problem with this month is overall, I don't know if you remember, we got our asses handed to us on the synthetic earlier. So we have, um, and I'll just make sure I did update the formula. Yeah, I got the 260, the 220, and the 230. But we have a loss, a synthetic loss of 58.6 million. We have short call income of 407,000, which does not help. So we have a net loss of 58.2 million, which again, we can ignore total income per share, but even short call income per share, two cents. And if we look at our estimate for the month, you're going to get three cents, which is a 1% yield. Obviously, you're not going to get three cents. So let's go dipping. How much do we have in NAV reserve? Well, since I've been tracking it, and again, I did not track it in November, and that's when the fiscal year starts. And the reason I say fiscal year, I wanted to capture... Again, the entire year so we can see how much they paid, you know, because they're supposed to pay 90% 90, 90 of their uh, income. So if I zoom out and I highlight the NAV reserve per share, before this month, they had an extra 250 that I showed in reserve. This month, so far, they've lost 254. So they don't really, you know, have any extra after this month. So they're going to be dipping. They're going to be dipping into the fund. Uh, it's going to have to be some return of capital, it looks like. Which is, you know, Coney can afford it. Coney hasn't had this problem. 
So it's, it's a surprising situation, but it's bound to happen with these funds. Not everything is perfect, right? Cer certainly you feel like things could be avoided, but again, you can't expect perfection, all right? If you want perfection, try to do it yourself. But um, I'll just say this has been an ugly month from every single fund. Uh, Tesla, not as much, to be honest. Tesla is probably the best one so far. But like looking at this one, uh, Coney, it's just not, it's not a great month. That's all I could say. Let me move on. Outstanding holdings. Again, I'm not going to cover that because, you know, we got a whole four trading days till then. And we got the weekend. Uh, net asset value, 535.5 million. The NAV is 23.34 and the trade price is 23.66. Oh, I almost forgot. All right. Someone asked me yesterday, can you explain um, what this 10 for one, how this 10 for one stock split um, is going to affect uh, NVIDIA. So, all right, just let's look, look at the synthetic, for example, right? How many contracts do we have, right? Right now, you know, they have 5,040 contracts, right? So in our scenario, you know, say we have one share of NVIDIA, right? You own one share of NVIDIA, 10 for one split. You know, this is a forward split, not a reverse split. So in that example, you get 10 shares. You turn that one into 10, but the overall value is still the same, right? So, you know, what should happen, again, I don't think we've had a, a forward split on any uh, underlying since we took over, but obviously we can afford 10 times more uh, the amount of contracts, right? So you would, you would expect, you, you know, we would have, uh, many, obviously, uh, 10 times more the amount of contracts because the strike price will go from 1040 to 104, right? Essentially, just, uh, you know, take a zero off, right? A new strike price, you would take that and you just divide it by 10. Right? 104. So amount of contracts you figure would go up by 10, right? Multiply by, by 10 because we can afford that many more. How the hell did that not work? Oh, yeah, sometimes he's stupid. Yeah, so 51,400 contracts. Again, a lot's going to change before then. So I'm just trying to, you know, make this as simple as possible. And also, when you look at this sheet, um, you know, Obviously, the underlying is going to go down. Our all of the strike prices in the options chain will adjust with the the forward split. So obviously, our numbers will adjust. Our strike prices will adjust. Like these strike prices here, it'll be one hundred eight, right? One hundred eight fifty, things like that. So, but we'll have that many more contracts, ten times the amount of contracts, right? And the strike price will go down. So. In the end, there's really no effect, to be honest. There's no effect. It's just, you know, an accounting change, right? There's just number changes. It's kind of like an accounting nightmare. It's going to be annoying for me, to be honest, to update my spreadsheets and everything. But overall, for the NVIDIA stock, NVIDIA stock it's really, really good. And for their options chain, it's super good. Because think about it. Like, as an individual, if you want to, for example, do the wheel on NVIDIA... How much do you need? You need $1,000 times 100 shares. You need $100,000. Are you kidding me? Who the hell has $100,000? Not me. Who has $100,000 to do the wheel on one stock? Not me. So what if it's at, you know, what if NVIDIA gets a 10 to 1 split and is priced at $100? All right. So 100 shares is now what? $10,000. Okay, that's a little pricey, but it's almost affordable. You get what I mean? So the options chain is going to be more crowded. And then buying the stock, who, you know, the new investors, they don't have $1,000 to buy NVIDIA. But if they see NVIDIA at 100 bucks, they're going to buy it. So typically, again, forward splits are always a good thing, I think, for the price. Which, again, as that approaches, I feel like we're going to be green. I don't understand why the strike price is just so tight. Anyway, I hope I uh, explained that right. Sorry if I didn't, but um, I'm kind of all over the place today. All right, we finished coin, coning. 
to my knowledge. Um, MSTY, buy call, buy to close, sell call for next week. The easiest one of the bunch. Thank you, Misty, for making my life easy on one. All right, let's go to the uh, spreadsheet. All right, synthetic, 1540. No change to it, no nothing. So no need to talk about it. But again, it's looking good. How did Mr. do yesterday? MSTR was up 9.12%. MSTY is was up 6.99%. Outstanding. Unbelievable. All right, so they closed out. They're 1830 and they paid nine cents. So that is called pure profit. They made 2.2 million. They yielded 85%. Great job, Misty Fund Manager. Hell yeah. You know why? Because they went 15% out of the money. All right, what are they doing next week? They got, well, the one from yesterday, 885 contracts, biggest position, 1720 strike. What? 2.0. 0.09% out of the money? I mean, that's not, that doesn't make sense. That makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. I mean, I checked the numbers a million times. Makes no sense. And let's, uh, let's go to the holdings tab, right? Let's see if they're, let's see what the strike price shows. Yep, 1720. The one above that, 1740. So this one, they opened at 12% out of the money, and this one had an extra trading day. So, however, that one's already 3% out of the money. So you got a position that's 3% out of the money. And then, you know, again, that's only 10 contracts. And then you got the 885 contracts, four trading days, 2.09% out of the money. What is happening? Is crypto going to dump next week? Like, what? What? And again, okay, what's the 30-day IV? Well, it's 91%. It's not, it's not low. Let's see what they yielded on this. They yielded 91%. So I know they strive for high yield on MSTY, but bro, what in the hell? What in the hell? Come on, Misty, man. This is why I said Tesla had the best week because Misty would have. Misty's done well, but that was just, come on. Uh, 4.4 million outstanding shares, no change. All right, so uh, we covered the 30-day IV. We covered the shares. Net income, there is none. There's a $15 million loss on the weekly calls, and we're about to lose more money next week. Sorry for being Mr. Negative, but I was just very confused with that move. Um, this emoji, I think it's clear. The Misty Fund Manager, they started smoking a little early on the Friday. Maybe they went out to lunch, you know, sm- Lit up a blunt with their friends, came back, did some trades. Whoops, 2%. My bad. Obviously, I'm kidding, guys. Anyway, synthetic income for Misty, 35.7 million. Short call loss, 15 million. Net income is at 20.6 million. That is a income per share of $4.69, okay? Is that good? It's okay. I mean, obviously, it's good. But the short call income... The short call loss is not good, you know, so this synthetic saved them. Yes. So, yes, obviously, total income per share we're going to focus on. That is the focus for Misty this month. And what are they going to pay? Probably over $2. So everyone's going to be happy in the end. But again, when you see things like this, like what if we lose our shirts next week because of this move? You know, at the same time, what if MSTR stays flat or tanks? Are they going to look like geniuses? I, I still don't think so because I still don't think it's worth that risk. That's just me. Everyone else, I know, I get I get what they say. Let them do their job. Shut up. All right. You don't know crap. But I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm not feeling it. All right. What do we got for the holdings for the going into next week? We don't care because it's still too early. Uh, net asset value, $152.6 million. The NAV is $34.69, and the trade price is $34.75. Okay, no discount for you. Um, so, yeah, that's the summary. That's everything. That's, that's all she wrote, right? I mean, do we have any? I mean, we could look at after hours. What's the point, though, right? A lot's going to happen over the weekend. Um, but let's just see, because it's not going to show... 
pre-market, it'll just show how after hours reacted, Tesla went down 0.22%. Uh, Tesla went down 0.13%. NVIDIA went up. Well, it, that ain't good, right? It up 0.4%. NVIDIA went up 0.35%. It's like they, they don't want NVIDIA to hit 30. Coinbase, okay, okay. It's going down, that's good. Down 0.27%. Uh, Kony, actually up 0.34%. MicroStrategy, MSTR, down 0.88%. MSTY, flat. And TSLL, I got a great options video coming out. I'm doing really good with this, with uh, my trading. Very happy about it, um, but TSLL, Perfect spot, 773. Perfect spot for me, at least. Um, so I'm very happy about that. All right, so that is the update, guys. That is the summary. That is the you know the recap. So again, today's Saturday. I covered the Friday trades. There is no Monday recap, but I did put a video out there for you guys to watch together, right? I know uh, everyone wants to maybe go in the chat anyway, but it's about Round Hill. It's about how you can retire on Round Hill. So I ran some numbers for you guys to see what it would look like to compound weekly, right? Weekly dividends, compounding fast. You get paid weekly. You put it right in. You, get, you put, you know, you get paid again. You put it right in. So the compounding is really, really good. So check out that video. It'll be Monday, 6.30 a.m., the usual time. And then Tuesday, I'll do the Tuesday recap or Monday recap, whatever you want to call it. Uh, because obviously the markets open back up on the Tuesday and then we'll see where we stand. Um, obviously, we'll recap the strikes and everything and all that jazz. But as far as this weekend goes, um, I will have an options and swing trading update video today. I'll have the Defiance weekly recap tomorrow morning. And what else? I don't know. I'll, I'll, I got some... Uh, I obviously have ton, you know, tons of different ideas. I just need to make some time for it, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's gonna be a busy weekend. Uh, today is actually my little one's birthday. He's turning two. So I guess that should be the key word, right? So today's key word, by the way, if you're new to the channel, we do a key word at the end of every video. All that means is if you wanna prove that you made it to the end of the video, all you have to do is say the key word via comment, um, to this video. So today's keyword is happy second birthday, baby R-O-D. All right. Um, as always, guys, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you're entertained. By the way, I didn't update you guys. I did not hit a thousand likes. It's okay. I hit like 775. So that's really awesome. So I don't, I don't think we're close enough to the 1000 part. So I'm going to I stopped bugging you guys for a little bit in the beginning of the video for likes. I'll do it at the end, of course, as I always do. So I, if you did like this video, please hit the like button. You know, we'll try to average 500 likes a video per day. I think that's respectable. And then once we build up higher and higher, then I'm going to really go after that thousand like goal. I don't think we're there yet, though. Um, soon, soon enough. And then what happens? Then we move on to the next goal, right? Just like our accounts. Anyway, guys. If you made it this far again i appreciate you guys watching if you're in the youtube chat uh please join the discord to keep the conversation going we'll be chatting all weekend about our moves heading into next week or we'll be just chatting about health and exercise we'll be chatting about sports um and this and that and the other thing and it's a great time so i hope to see you in there anyway guys oh yeah Real quick, if you're just joining the Discord, I will not message you. No of the admins will message you. No moderators will message you. So if you get a message right away when you join or even weeks later and it says retire on dividends dot or retire underscore on dividends, I am retire on dividends. Exactly. So if you don't see that, it's not me, but I won't message you. So that's the giveaway. So if you see a message that looks like me, it's not me. So please report them. Please block them. Please ignore them. They're spammers. They're trying to get your money because they have nothing better to do with their their, their lives. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's, it's a joke, but it is what it is. It's, a, it's, you know, it's what we're living in now. But uh, anyway, I still hope to see you there, spammers or not. But uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Later.